everybody my name is Becca welcome back to my channel or if you are new here welcome today I'm gonna be going over my favorite books of 2020 um so I read a lot this year a lot more than I think I ever have in my entire life so I just wanted to share my books that I have given a five star rating throughout the year so Let's just jump right into it. The first one I have is Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell. So this one, if you don't know, is a sequel to her first book, Carry On. Um, it follows the two main characters, Simon and Baz, as they try to navigate the United States. So this obviously takes place after the events of Carry On. This book kind of tells you what happens when the hero of the story basically fulfills his destiny. Simon, Baz, and then their friend Penny head out to the U.S. to do like a friend's road trip and they run into some trouble along the way. But yeah, I love this book. I think I liked it better than Carry On, which is weird because I feel like people usually prefer the first book to the sequel, but this one this one grabbed my attention faster than Carry On did and I got through it like pretty fast and I just I just love this book so I had to give it five stars and the way that it left off it seemed like there could be a third book which I mean I don't know if that's gonna happen or not but I really hope so because it would be very interesting to see where they went from there I might have to do a reread of this book just because I mean I read it at the beginning of the year so I remember it but like I don't remember everything so I know eventually I will probably actually do a like reread of Fangirl, Carry On, and then Wayward Son, which I'm actually looking forward to because I haven't read Fangirl in years. Also, can we just talk about the book itself underneath the dust jacket? So pretty. The next one I have is Serpent and Dove. I I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm really bad with pronouncing names. So if I pronounce these names wrong, please don't get mad at me. But Shelby Maharan. So I just got the sequel to this one, Blood and Honey. It is on my January TBR. I am so excited to read it. I, the way I just love this book, the way I love Read and Woo, I feel like I shouldn't, but I just do. I love them so much. This book follows um, Lou, who is a witch, and Reed, who is a witch hunter. Um, Lou gets caught, but they don't know she's a witch. But for her punishment, she ends up having to marry Reed. Nobody knows she's a witch, but she's living in this church full of witch hunters. And so, basically, it's like, it's kind of an enemy to lovers trope a little bit. But the plot twist at the end blew my mind. Like, as soon as they told us, I was shook. I was shook. So I am so excited to read Blood and Honey to finally see where they go from there. I just, I loved this book. I was like so into this book. I think it took me about four days to read it and I'm not even kidding you. I like barely did anything else. I was just like reading this and I was like, I need to finish. I need to finish. It was so good. I loved Serpent and Dove. And again, look at that cover literally so pretty. So the next one I have is Eclipse by Stephanie Meyer. Um, I feel like this is an unpopular opinion, but again, I'm not sure. Eclipse was my favorite book. It was like by far my favorite book. And it was my favorite movie as well. I'm sure everybody knows what happens in this book. But my I just want to share my favorite part. My favorite part is at the very end like of the fight when Bella and Edward and Seth are all up on that mountaintop and so Edward ended up killing Victoria and Bella like cut herself so she was bleeding to like kind of distract him during the fight and so she was like standing up against rocks and she was like bleeding and Edward literally had just like ripped her head off and he like sees Bella like standing like by the rocks and he's like oh don't be afraid don't be afraid like he was just so scared that she was gonna be afraid of him because she just watched him like rip Victoria's head off but she was just like okay and what about it but it was just <laughs> it was just so cute because he was like it's okay don't be afraid and uh and she was just like literally why would I be afraid I wish 
they put that in the movie. I really wish they would have put that in the movie. That would have been so cute. I don't know. I just love that. But yeah, I just, I love this book. This one, I mean, I flew through the entire series, but this one, I really flew through because I, there was just something about it. I don't know. I guess it was because it's after what happened in New Moon. And so he was in it more and he was more kind of like loving towards her just because he knew like what it was like to live without her. And he was scared of like losing her. So he was more like affectionate and stuff. But I just thought, it, I just love this book. This one is my favorite book. So the next one I have, I had already talked about before, and that is The Princess Will Save You. I actually just finished this one like last week, two weeks ago. Um, it was on my December TBR. And the way that I love this book, the way that I love Luca, oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. By the way, this is by Sarah Henning. I got too excited. I forgot to say her name. Basically, it's kind of described as a retelling of The Princess Bride, but like the roles were reversed. And I saw people talking about it on Goodreads and they were like, oh, it was like, stop calling it uh, The Princess Bride reversed. It was nothing like it. But the thing is, some of the events that like took place in the book were based off of The Princess Bride. Like the entire book itself, it's not going to be the same thing. Like you can't go in expecting it's going to be the same thing so i don't know anyways that's my rant okay i have a very very hard time with the names in this book because her name is like amarande i think whatever i'll just i'm doing my best here so basically amarande is a princess and her father the king tragically dies and at his funeral all these other princes from different kingdoms come through because they're going to try to marry her off so they can have a king to rule Ardenia. But she is in love with Luca, who is her stable boy. And they grew up together. They have been best friends and they're in love. After the funeral, when Amarande gives this whole speech about how she just wants to basically rule herself because she cares about the kingdom and she cares about her people. She doesn't want these princes to come in and try to steal the throne because all they care about is power but she actually cares about her people so one of the princes hires these three pirates to kidnap luca and they leave a note at the stable saying marry this prince or your stable boy dies so basically they're holding him until she marries one of the princes and it's just this whole blackmail thing and she amarande obviously is not having it so she is very trained she's very skilled she takes off and goes after these three to find Luca. So it's very good. Very, very good. Again, a plot twist at the end. Two plot twists at the end, actually. Two. Oh my gosh, they were so good. And I had looked it up and apparently there's a sequel in July. And I'm literally so excited to read the sequel. I'm so excited to read the sequel. This book was so good. I am not even kidding you. I read it in two days. So... I definitely think I see a reread in the future and like the very near future because I the way I just love this book so much it was so good and it's so funny too because I just grabbed this book on a whim I was just at I was at Barnes and Noble it was a few months ago and I was like there to get certain books and as I was walking out there was a table full of just this book because it had just been released and I was like oh I've never like heard of this so I picked it up and I read the inside and I was like oh I like the princess bride so like we'll see where it goes and I this is this is now one of my like all-time favorite books like I I just adore it like I loved it so much and I don't hear any I haven't heard anybody talk about it either so I'm very interested to see what other people have thought about it all right and my last five star read of 2020 you should all see this coming is Chain of Gold. <laughs> I feel like at this point I'm like a Cassandra Clare spokesperson because all I talk about are these books. I think in every single video I've made I've talked about the Mortal Instruments series at some point and I mean it's not a bad thing. At least I don't think it's a bad thing but anyways yes so my last five star read of 2020 is Chain of Gold. I'm sure you all know what this one is about. It was really just the characters that brought it all in for me. I just, I love every single one of them. And it was just perfect. The story was perfect. 
Um, I mean, the only one who I cannot stand is Grace Blackthorn, and that's for good reason. Um, but yes, I'm very excited for Chain of Iron. I have pre-ordered three different special edition copies of this book because I'm so excited for it. I think, I feel like that's probably my most anticipated read of 2021 is Chain of Iron. And this one, unlike her other books, I feel like it was very fast paced, which is good, which like, I really liked it. I finished this one again. I probably finished it in like three days when I first read it. Um, I might read it again before Chain of Iron comes out just to kind of refresh my memory because I did read it back in March. But it was just so good and I just loved it. It was just perfect. And honestly, James and Cordelia, they just deserve to be together. I just want them to be together in the end, <sighs> which I know they do, but I'm, you know, it's just the point of getting there. So yes, those are my favorite five star reads of 2020. Um, if you've read any of them, let me know what you thought or let me know what your five star reads of 2020 are. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you for watching. Bye.